Okay, so to, to get this this hub off here, I use a strap wrench. Get it on there to hold it. And then, uh, I don't have the compressor run up right now, I'd use an impact to get this off, but you just get it on there and give it a sharp whack, you know, and it, it can come off. This will allow it, and this out of there get, allows us to get to the bolts that hold this whole unit on. Okay. So then, this comes off. So does this. Keep all that, that just stays together like that. And then this piece fits down in here. Oh, look at that. I got some dirt or something in there. Anyway, there's that. Then uh, that allows the belt to come off. See, the chain came off a couple times, so the belt's a little worn on the edge, but still looks good after over 20 hours or so. It doesn't have anything that looks bad. And then this is an important little spacer, at least they say so. So you got to have that, and then this comes off. This got a key in here, goes in the keyway, it's welded in. So that's how that goes. So I'll keep this configured pretty much the way it is, just to, so I don't have to worry about it later. Okay. All right. So there's the four. Oh, and by the way, that was half inch, and so are these. So that's probably the only uh, SAE size nuts and bolts on the whole thing. So uh, let's see. I'll bring it. Oh, it's on there. Okay. I gotta get something to get that off of there. Like I say, I don't have my impact, you know, the compressor up, so I'll just uh, go the uh, old uh, double wrench route. Hook them up like that. It gives you all the torque you need. Yep. My father-in-law taught me that when he was a mechanic for 50 years. He's since passed away. That was back in the 70s when he was teaching me how to wrench and stuff. Wrenching is just really just a hobby, you know. I uh, I don't I'm not a mechanic as a, as a rule. I just don't mind doing mechanical work. Because back in the day, you didn't have any money, so you had to fix your own car. So you just got used to it. Okay, we're all. Uh, they're all broke free. Fumbling around here. Need a half inch socket. So you see how I have mine mounted at this angle, but because of these other holes, you can mount it a number of different configurations, which is kind of handy, isn't it? I've seen it done a number of ways on other carts, and that doesn't seem to matter which angle it's at, it functions pretty good. This turned out to be a tough unit, you know, I haven't had any troubles with it or the one on old number 27. So, but this is, uh, you know, this isn't a clone. This one cost me like 230 bucks or something like that, so they're not cheap. Okay. So there that is. This is another little spacer that's important. So, set this over here with the spacer there so I don't forget it. And that's a bolt. And then this one goes in here. Get this off to the side. Okay. So this is a bracket here. That for for the spring return spring, which is something I I made up out of some steel I had laying around that just allows a place for the spring to hook to. Come on out of there. 
So uh, when I made this, I, you know, there was this threaded boss here. I don't know what it went to, but it, it locked it. I locked out because it was a nice place to put this bracket. Okay, so this is the side cover we got to take off. We got we got to take off all this because we got to take the flywheel off and we got to get to the timing key behind the flywheel. Here's the governor. So this whole thing will come off and then we'll get into it from here and we can disconnect it. And then this spring, I'm pretty sure this one is uh, reused on the new throttle setup. So uh, before we get to that, I think we'll focus on getting all this off of here and getting this off and uh, go from there. Well, it's a new day, so let's continue on taking our motor apart here. Um, this is the second video in the series. I don't know how many videos it's going to take, but because uh, we're going to go through this together and who knows what's going to happen. So Now, as it turns out, uh, on um, my other car, old number 27, I put an electric start on that motor. Uh, it's a Honda two, GX200 also. Um, so I had to take the cover off, flywheel off, you have to put a stator in it and you know some other things. So I've had this thing apart before, I've done this part before. I've never had the side cover off, so I guess I didn't need to take this off, but let's see what it looks like. Okay, so there's the recoil. Disconnect this wiring here. There we go. And then uh, unplug it. There we go. Okay. All right. Well, you. Wouldn't mistake getting that on right because they can only go one way. Okay, so that should release the cover, and it does. All right, so there's the cover and the switch. I'm going to relocate this switch to a different, to up on top of the motor at some point. Because uh, I have to reach under the cart to turn it off and on right now. Take it that side.
Well, you know, there's oil on this engine, and I, I'm not sure where the hell that's coming from. Shouldn't have any oil on it. There's a little oil from here, because uh, the hole that this governor goes into probably doesn't have any kind of seal on it, because this is like a stationary motor, and we're thrashing it around so some oil works its way up. That'll get plugged. Okay, so... Now I gotta start, decide which way to go here. I think I'll, I think I'll take this all off first. I gotta find me a socket for that. Got my, uh, got the compressor up today, so I can use the impact wrench. So I have my uh, impact wrench here, a little extension of 19 millimeter, and uh, I don't know how tight this thing is, but let's find out. And if it starts to spin, I can remember just let go, but. Shoot, that came right off. That's good. Okay, there we go. And there's the fan. Yep, that's a little dirty, but looks good. Okay. So, uh, getting this flywheel off on, my, on the other motor, I had to get some pry bars out and in fact, I remember I had left this on there because I had to tap on the shaft here. So I'm going to rig up, see what I, if I can remember how I did that. A couple of big screwdrivers and a pry bar. So I'll get that set up and we'll see if we can get this flywheel off. That'll be interesting. Okay. I uh, rounded up some screwdrivers and uh, I'm trying to remember exactly what I did before. But I think I have to take this off because... You have to have pressure kind of all the way around. You know, as nice as these Hondas are, there's no threaded spot to put a puller on. So, you know, everything I've seen, and then I got the other one off in the same fashion. I used screwdrivers and I just kept applying pressure and tapping on here. And then uh, it finally came off. So, I need to, uh, I need to uh, take the, this off. So these screwdrivers are in locations where there's plenty of meat in the casting. So uh, trying to get this out of the way so I can get under it from this side. stuff. So this one's already loose. Okay, so that lets that swing out of the way. Now I can get to it from, from over here. This makes me nervous as hell, you know? I gotta tell you. This seems like the dumbest way to get this thing off of there. Somebody should have thought up something a little bit better. See, I gotta be careful of the casting. You know, right there is pretty decent. And right there, maybe. 
No, that's what I did. No. So I pretty much have to go here. Alright, so. Snag them up. And this is a little bit high of the crankshaft there. Ah, shoot. What? Did it come off? Oh, ho, ho, ho! It worked! Ha, ha, ha! All right. First time. Phew! There it is. All right, you know, that just made my day because this is the thing I worry about the most. So on the other motor, you know, I put an electric start so it came with a new flywheel that had the magnets in it for the stator. And then uh, there's uh, some bosses here. They're not threaded, but I tapped them to six millimeter. That allows you to mount the stator. And then the wires come up through. So now you can have a battery and I guess a light system, you know. Uh, so works pretty good. It runs the starter, ch keeps the battery charged. So I have an extra one of these laying around from that. So uh, now we can see a little bit of oil from the seal here. But not bad. Some dirt. All right, well, that's huge. That is huge. So, all of this was so we could change this little key right here. And it's got an offset on it, so it changes the timing. Shoot, I'm not sure, but I think it advances the timing. At least as Brian and I were debating what it, what it did. I imagine I could read up on it. But uh, we figure that in a stationary position, the motor is probably slightly retarded because it really doesn't have to perform. So, this probably bring, brings it into a timing spec that's better for... You know, the RPM of 4,500 4, to 5,000 RPM. So, now I'm no expert at this, you know, I just wing it, you know. Uh, I don't mind digging in and seeing what happens, but uh, boy, that was huge that this came off. 